Hi, uh, thank you for coming to the session. This session is using the Power Platform to hone my Xbox skills. So just check you're in the right session and do all the things that you would do with a, a big day of lots of tracks just to ensure you're in the right place. Um, my name is Matt Beard. Before we start too much, let's just give a quick thank you to all of our sponsors. So uh, Scriptrunner, DQ Global, Proxima 3, Redspire, Agilisys and Hitachi Solutions. Thank you to these guys for sponsoring Scottish Summit. Um, without people like this, these events don't simply don't happen. So uh, thank you very much for all them um, and the work they do to do that. Uh, introduction to me, uh, my name is Matt Beard. I work for an ISV called Data Rate, where I act as the development team leader. So I lead um, the team to build anything they do, basically. So we own things from uh, raw APIs for data cleansing through to Power Platform and Salesforce type solutions. So I have a very um, wide range of things that I do. And that on there is my Twitter. Um, it's probably the best place to get me. I, I tweet far too much about nonsensical things. I'm also on LinkedIn if you ever wanted to connect through that way. Um, but yeah, be, feel free to connect at any time if you want. So a little bit about me. So professionally, uh, yeah, I've been a full stack C Sharp developer for 10 years now. I, I left university and went straight into C Sharp. I actually learned computer games at university. That was my base. Um, and whilst I didn't necessarily follow a gaming um, career, there isn't that much difference between generic coding and coding for games. So we... Uh, I'm a full stack C sharp developer, excuse me. Uh, the Power Platform, I sort of fell into the Power Platform eight years ago when it was back in the dynamic CRM 2011 days. It's evolved massively since then, so there'll be people here now that didn't do anything with dynamics. So yeah, I've been in the Power Platform for about eight years, and it's certainly a, an area of my professional career in which I, I like to say I specialise in at this point. Um, and I don't work for a partner. I don't work for um, people uh, that have their own CRMs, although we do have our own. Um, because I'm an ISV, I'm quite fortunate. I see lots of things, see lots of systems. I help people in all sorts of variety. So I've seen lots of variety in what I do. Um, although, yeah, the caveat of my Power Platform Specialist is that I am not very good at Power BI, which will very quickly become a topic of uh, the discussion today. So if you're a Power BI expert and want to come in here for lots of Power BI tips and tricks, this is probably not going to be the right session for you. But it's all a bit of fun. Now, outside of university, I mentioned that, yeah, I, uh, outside of uh, my career, excuse me, uh, yeah, I started at computer games. So I did computer games at university and learned all the technologies behind them. So I've been an avid gamer for a long time, and uh, Halo 2 was the first time I really got engrossed in a game of, of online nature. I was playing single-player games before then, but Halo 2 truly d redefined online gaming, in my opinion. And from 2004 onwards, that's been the case. Um, I don't even want to think how much time I spent playing Halo 2 during my uh, school years. But the problem is I'm getting old. Um, and getting old means I often get defeated more than I should at this point, and it's not fun. So, what is today about? Now, basically, I, I have a pet project that I started to build. It is a bit of fun, um, and I'm just going to be showcasing that, essentially, so you can see some cool things, how things talk to each other, little bits I try to learn about, and just a bit different. So many sessions nowadays are... Here's how you do this in a very strict way, or here's how this new feature works. And I decided to self-teach myself something, and this is me sharing the story of those things that I self-taught. So um, you're not going to get, if you're a developer, you're not going to get any ALM techniques in this. If you are um, looking for Power Virtual Agents, you're not going to get super deep Power Virtual Agents tutorials. What you will get, though, is just how I self-taught and did certain things. So what you'll see throughout this entire demo is you'll see Power Automate. Um, you will see some Power Apps in both model-driven and Canvas um, sides. Um, some Power BI, and as I mentioned, poorly, so it's not going to be fantastic, but it does what it needs to do. And again, this is how I'm teaching myself Power BI. Uh, and a little bit of Azure. There's um, some Azure App Services in there, and there's a couple of times that i got to run in those scenarios, and we'll get onto that as, as the day goes on. Um, now, bear in mind, this is both A, unfinished it never i don't think it ever will be finished i have no drive to finish it it will always keep growing i have no one to impress so this is unfinished and polished and i'm just going to share with you the raw thing of what it looks like uh, and it's just fun um it it's let my hair back a little and, and and understand how things work in a context that is a little bit more enjoyable um so yeah that's what this session's all about so here's a nice screenshot for you 
this, as I mentioned, Halo 2, 2004, the game that I think changed my game in life forever. Um, and it looks good, right? And it's people still play these games on the Xbox um, to this day. Uh, and for those that don't know, uh, Halo 2 was made by a company called Bungie. Now, they, it is no longer made by Bungie. Bungie outsourced it to another... I uh, sold it, or Microsoft sold it, or however those gaming structures work, to a uh, company called 343. But Bungie was the game that was, was the first-person shooter creator that I just naturally felt an affinity to. Um, and what happened with Bungie is that a few years ago, they released a game called Destiny. Um, and then now they're up to Destiny 2. And that is the game that we're going to talk about today. So this is Destiny 2. Um, very similar first person shooter you get the idea um, and this is the game that I still regularly play to this day so this is going to be the focal point of what I talk about today this is I used Destiny 2 and I used all sorts of power platform features to um, to learn things and to do certain things so when I mention I play Destiny 2 a lot let me put that into perspective for you okay so um, I found a website, which we'll go on to shortly, that, that lets you know how much of this game you played. Now, bear in mind, this is Destiny 2. This is not Destiny 1. This is the sequel of the first game that I already put lots of time into. Imagine if your work calendar looked like this. That's January. That's 24 hours a day for all of January. I have so far played Destiny. And that of February. So this is since the game came out in a couple of years ago now. I think it was three or four years ago now. In fact, it was the year my, my daughter was born, so it was it would have been three years ago. So in three years, I've played it this much, which I think whilst raising a daughter and living my life, is quite a lot. It's nearly two whole months of gaming without sleeping, without doing anything. That's quite a lot of gaming. Um, so I do play it quite a lot, and imagine if your diary looked like that. But where, where I got this statistic from is there's a, there's a website I found which was, a, I think it was called Time Time Wasted on Destiny because I'm quite clearly not the only person that wastes as much time on this game as, as that. Um, so what it showed me here was, and I stumbled upon this a few years ago, which was a, a summary of how long you've played in the game. And that's a long time. So I've actually now played Destiny 2, which is on the left, for still less than Destiny 1. <sighs> Fun times. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, that's just gameplay. This doesn't include loading times and waiting times and shutting up and down times. That is literally with the controller in my hand, actually playing, not waiting. So when you figure into account loading times, I don't even want to know how much time that is. But I enjoy it. It's a passion. It's, it's the very few things we have in life. Um, but this little website, just knowing how much I play this game, set my cogs were in. Um, because... How do they know that? How does a website that I'm not logged into the game, I'm just on a PC at work, how can it know how long I've played the game for? So it just set that little nugget at the back of my mind that I that just earwormed into something bigger and bigger. So I then started to think, if they can find that data, then so can I. So when I want to learn stuff, let's see if I can combine this. Let's see if I can combine my work life and my home life. Let's see if I can personal develop my skills in my free time with the subject that I care about. doesn't gain anybody. I don't need to impress anybody. But if I learn one new thing whilst doing it, then my employer is going to be happy. It's good, better for me. I feel more enjoyable. I'm a big passionate advocate for the community. If I learn one thing that I can then share onto the community, fantastic. So, um, yeah, I, I thought, well, what if I do this? I can self-grow for the passionate subject. I've no pressure, like, as long as if this is my own time. Nobody's coming at me going, when's it finished? I want to see it. When's it done? So it's all in my own time. But but where do I begin? So now I know that there's something behind the scenes that I can do. I started to dig around onto the internet. Um, and as a developer, I've got a slight head start. That I can read some of this documentation more than other people can. But one of the things that I want to show during this, um, this time I've got with you, hopefully, is that you don't need to be a developer to do that. And I stumbled on this page. Which is the Bungie.API, now, as I mentioned, Bungie make the game. So this means they've got an API, which they make sense because this person before told me that I've played the game for far too long. So, this is where I started. Started with an app called Postman. Um, now, if you've ever heard of Postman, what Postman is, is a way of uh, calling API requests and seeing how it responds. Is. And in fact, let's take a look at Postman first. So, Postman. 
is a way of understanding APIs and sort of seeing what they do and how they do it. So this is a sort of a throwback. To, this helps you essentially understand how the internet works. So if I just press F12 on Chrome a minute, and what you will see is this will pop up my little ad mini stuff. And if I do a refresh on this page, what you can see here is this is everything that page is loading in. There's lots and lots and lots of things that the internet's loading in. It's loading in JavaScript and every single image and every single text and fonts and all sorts of things. So actually, although it looks like I've loaded a single page, actually what I've done is I've loaded in lots and lots and lots of little bits and, and it recurses on. Now, the thing that I'm trying to explain here is that each one of these is a request to the internet to say, give me something. And ultimately, that's all an API is. An API is you saying to the internet, I would like to do this or get this piece of information. Can I please have it? So if you were to click in one of these and you could see that it just performs sort of, if I pop that out and make it full screen, um, you will see that there is um, all sorts of requests and responses and lots of things that look confusing but really, really are not that confusing when you dig into it. And Postman helps you understand that to get the way around it. Um, so if I open Postman, which is what I've got here, now what I can do is I can... Um, I have workspaces, and this syncs between my um, accounts. So that I, on whatever machine I'm on, I've always got the same nice working environment. And I use Postman a lot when I'm first starting doing development of anything of any sort to just get an idea of what the APIs do. So you can see here that there's lots of variety of ones. And actually, um, if you do follow my blog, I have a series of um, custom connectors for Power Automate that I release. Generally, this is where I start building them, and then I learn what they do, and then I publish it out. In, into the public, in, into into the um, for the public to use if they so wish, and also Scottish Summit, right? So you're here today. Uses things like sessionized behind the scenes and Event Mobi, which is what builds the app. All these things have raw APIs, and there is a system behind the scenes that keeps them all in sync. And this all started work through Postman. So Postman is very useful. But what 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 what, what I mean? I'm sort of waffling on without actually showing you something. It is. So if I if I go to Data Rate, it's a nice little example because it's one I know that I know very well. Um, one of the things that data rate provides as a service is the ability to take an email address, go to the internet and go, is it real? Um, if the answer is yes, you can do this. If it's no, you can do this. And you can do whatever you want. But the API call is the bit that goes, is it real? Um, so after reading the data rate documentation, what, what you would learn is you would need to send a post request, so a bit of text, to the internet to work out what it says. So this is a very, very dumbed down, simple request that you would make. So I'm doing a post to that email. Uh, to that web URL, excuse me, with a body of text. Now, there is an API key in this. Don't worry, I, I'm not going to blur it out. It won't work after this demo, so don't worry about that. Uh, and I send this bit of data, and so I'm sending a username, I'm sending my email address, and I'm saying what level I want it at. This, you would find out more if you look at the documentation. And I press send, and that's it. It's a raw request going to the internet. Uh, and you can see that um, the data rate email address is a catch-all. So what that means is that um, the, da the at data rate email address account will receive emails to anything at data and depends how it handles it. Um, now, if I was to change that and I do this request and I do it again, you will now see that the result response changes. So this is me making raw API requests. So I now understand enough of how this web request works that I can put it into my um, into a custom connector if you wanted to. Um, or you could put it into some C-sharp code or you could put it into a plugin or you could put it into Salesforce. You could do whatever you want. Um, the point is now is that you now know how the data's got to look to go to this web service and how it looks when it comes back. And it's a solid starting point of what you can do. So you can see I've got loads of fun ones in here. So I've got um, things I've played. So what three words, if you've ever played what three words, it's fantastic. I always talk about what three words, which is how you can turn an address or a latitude and longitude into a three meter square box anywhere around the world to help you with deliveries and stuff. So by looking at their documentation, what I learned was that you pass an API key, and again, don't worry about API keys, and you take three words and you send that, and you get a response back, and the response is, this is where it is. So again, this is just me building up a portfolio of APIs that I could potentially use, understand how they work, and I can I can play about with them. And up here we can see Bundy. So this is the thing that we're talking about. So a good example of this was Get Profile. It's a solid place to start. Now, um, I bypassed a few steps in the interest of this demo, which is finding out what some of the numbers in the URL meant. If you go on the Bundy documentation, they would tell you. So, for example, that means Xbox. That is my unique ID as a membership ID. Those sorts of things. I've sort of bypassed that for the for purposes of speed on this demo. 
Um, and yeah, so I now know this is the request that it wants. So um, it's actually par parsed things out. So this here is duplicated up here. It's built the URL based on that. Um, it's got some headers, it's got some API keys and all sorts of that. A lot of them are to generate, so I can hide them. Actually, the only thing I put in again was an API key. Um, and I press for send. So this again, just helps me confirm I've understood the API, I understand what it does, and also gives me an idea because of, of what the response looks like. Because it's great reading documentation to go, this is what we'll give you, we're going to give you um, a display name and we're going to give you a membership ID and a membership type. But to, until you see the data in, in all of its structure, you realize actually it's quite difficult to do. And this is a single request I've made now, which gets me my profile. And within my profile, it gets me some extra things. I mean, and look at the sheer amount of data this is going to return back now. For you to read that in documentation, you're not going to be able to visualize it. So I always find making these requests is, is useful. So let's just pick a few a few spot checks that you can see down here so I can collapse to understand my data so I can decide to use your info. So there you go. It's got my usernames that knows I'm talking about me so I can close that down. Um, date I last played, so at the time of recording, I played it far too late last night. Um, so I'm relatively tired, but you can see 12 hours ago I was playing this game. And I have some ideas, this is what I've got unlocked, all this sort of stuff. This is all publicly available because all I've done is pass in an API key. I've not authenticated really behind the scenes. I've just got an API key that I can get from the website and pushed it through. Uh, and then I've got characters. So then I've got, as we will establish shortly, you've got a number of characters you can do and what they've done and minutes played, all this sort of stuff. So you can see how the data that I've already seen has come about and I can really start playing with some stuff. Um, and yeah, now, now I've got this, I've got a solid starting point. So... Postman may look complex, and I know I've sort of jumped in at the deep end to show you this part, um, but I absolutely think Postman is something that's worth spending the time learning um, because it really helps you understand how API requests work and if you can get this idea in, and I'm not even in Power Platform yet, um, then it really can benefit. I certainly benefited me as a developer to understand how these things work. Um, so yeah, so that's Postman, and that was the starting point of what I'm talking about with that. Okay, so that was Postman. It's a nice little introduction and um, a way of making you realise the internet doesn't need to be as complex as people possibly think it is. Um, so I played about with Postman for a while, and I got some initial findings through the masses of the, the APIs available that Bungie provided to us, which was that some needed to be, needed to be me logged in through OAuth, which is a, an advanced way of logging in to give me authentication to do certain things. Some didn't, so some are publicly, publicly accessible by me just calling to a URL. Um, there is lots of data available, and I mean lots of data, which we'll get onto this shortly. So I, the world really is my oyster in what I want to do here. Um, and then finally, I understood the ideas and structure of it. I had a sort of rough idea of how it worked, so I was, it was interesting to see how the game correlates to the API and... Are they called the same? Are the things I expect to be still there? So a little bit of background to what I found, and I sort of knew this already from the game, which is that um, this is something that I will use later on. This is a very important, it's a fundamental part of the game Destiny 2 that I need to describe to you, which is that um, I have an account. I have a membership account. I have an Xbox Live account. So I have a, a single membership, and I am allowed up to three characters to play on my game. So I can pick a certain character, and I can play as that character, basically. Um, so this is what the API tells me, and actually, if I take a screenshot of the game, that correlates exactly with that, which is they are my three characters. This is not me, this is just a screenshot I found for, per for demo purposes. Um, but you can see there, there's three characters within that. So that's nice to know that that correlates, and this is what I'm going to be using. Um, the second thing I found, and this is what I will be using, so I want, I'm, I'm going to take a, a PvP approach. PvP is player versus player, which is you shoot other players while they're playing. Um, and I would like to see where I do well, where I do poorly, and, and all this sort of thing. Um, and what I found is that every single game I play gets stored on a thing called a, post, a post-game carnage report, which is basically when the game ends and all the scores show on the screen, that's a PGCR. And each one of them, as well as having top-line statistics, so the map it was played on, the time it was played, who won, Within each one, it also breaks down each character and what each character did. So what, what what I did and what weapons I used and how many kills I got with each weapon and who I killed and all this massive data. That's all available for every single game I've played. And if you imagine there is one of these available for every single game that every single person plays, the volume of data that Bungie are allowing us access to is phenomenal. So it's good to know. It's great to know it's there. 
Um, and this is the sort of data structure that we'll be looking at. And in fact, let's take a quick look at what the data looks like just so you can get an idea of quite how much data I'm talking about. Okay, so we have a rough idea of the, the data that we're looking at sort of in pseudo when we're playing. I just wanted to show you the, the, one of the examples we get because this is what I might be using later on. And I spent a little bit of time just talking about which was this idea of PGCR and PGCR entries. Um, so if I was uh, load up to this, this is the endpoint I mentioned. So it's some stuff. Ultimately, that's the one I care about, an ID. This is the game ID. Some headers of what I do, and anyway, um, I press send on that. So let's see the response. So this gives you an idea. So um, this is the amount of data that I've got for a single game. Bear in mind, last night I probably played 20 games. So for me alone, I've got 20 bonds of this. I, the scale of this is just unreal. Um, and you can see here, if I scroll down, there is lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. So if I just make that slightly bigger on the screen, and let's take a look. Let's, let's, see, let's see what you can see, because we can decide what we're going to use later on. So, um, hashes, that's how the system tells me maps. So it doesn't give me the name, it gives me a hash. The reason for that is um, language encoding because I, I, you can't assume that everybody that uses this is going to be English. So you take a hash, you apply that with the country code and you get a map name. We'll go for that later on. So that was the map I played and the game type I played. I've got some details of my icon. If I click and control that, what you will hopefully see actually is that that is my icon. So it's nice to see that those links work and I can get clever with those things. Um, yeah, that's my name. That's who I was. So I play a thing called The Hunter and you do all these things. But you can see some statistics. So this is for the game. So if I was to just go up here, you can see entries. This is what I mentioned. So if I collapse this, what you will see is that there is a whole bunch of entries. So one for every person that was in that game. So that top one happens to be me. Doesn't mean I was top of the game, believe me. Um, and yeah, I did some stuff. So... Uh, this is where we care about. So assists, I got no assists. I didn't help with any of that. I got 15 kills. Um, I died nine times. Um, I got an average score of 4.6. But this sort of stuff. And this, this isn't. I've not done anything clever. This is literally the data that Bungie has already given to me. So if I can use this as a base, so I can really start analysing some fantastic stuff of um, what we're doing. So yeah, so this is an idea of this is the data that we're moving forward. There is lots of things, medals. So when I if I get a double kill, if I kill two people in three seconds, I get a medal for that. You can see there I earned one. I got a medal that gave me because I got a five kill streak. This is the sort of stuff you can really start building on. Um, and it's very clever. So, I mean, that's what it is. This is just a demo of the data you get. But you can really see now I've got this massive wide set of data available to me. I want to take it from this API, put it into a system, and do some clever stuff with it. Now is where the fun starts. Um, we have an idea of data. I've got enough to probably make a start at doing something. I'm not really sure what, and hence the title of this of not planning the next stage. I normally like to plan what I do far in advance, but this case was a case of I've got a good idea. Let's give it a go. So how do I start and what do I do? Now, the first thing that I'll refer back to is there's, there's a few things if you want to play with this sort of stuff you've got two options really which is either community plan or database for teams because i'm not doing this in work which means i can't chuck this into my production or my dev environment of where i'm, I'm working on a daily basis so I, I need somewhere else that i can is my playground uh, so database for teams is good for this if that's relatively new um the we do use things like custom connectors in their later run which Licensing is a bit awkward with the Dataverse for Teams. It does work for a while, and you've got to keep playing about. Um, so whilst Dataverse for Teams will work, um, if you've got an ability to use the community plan, I highly recommend the community plan. Um, you basically get your own environment to play about with and do whatever you want. It's, it's not production-enabled. It doesn't have its massive resources, but what it does is it it's a playground that you can't hurt anything, and you can just do whatever you want to do. So for this demo, I'm everything I do is in a community plan environment. And, um, yeah, I would suggest absolutely checking out the community plan and, and seeing what it's about. So what I'm going to sort of do at this point, because I've got a vague idea of the data I've got, is I, I know the data structure, at least, and I know the data I think I'm going to care about, so I'll get an initial data structure. Um, but now I need to then get at the data, and then I need to analyse the data. So this is sort of the route I'm going to take. And, and like I say, this is not um, inclusive of what I did. This was just a case of what can I do next, which, um, again, I'll reiterate, Personal project, fine. Actual, real-life career project, probably wouldn't do it this way, but that's the point of this session, right? It's a bit of fun, it's a bit of breaking the norm and just doing something a bit more unusual. So, um, first thing I'll do is let's have a big demo and let's see 
what I did and where I got to. Okay, so it's time to take essentially a bit of an unstructured look into everything I've done so far, just to take a look at what it does. That will show you how some of it works and just show you what we managed to do. It's pretty cool, and um, yeah, we can dig into it bit by bit and take a look. So coming from a Dynamics 2011 world, this is where I very first started. I know people were here way before that in three, four, and whatever. Um, Model-driven apps, to me, are a very useful way of seeing data, handling data, managing data. If you come from a canvas app world, the jump to model-driven apps sometimes can seem a little bit difficult. Um, so I'll start with the model-driven app because this is where I like to see the data and manage the data. So I built a few structures. I built the things we cared about, which is memberships and characters, and then PGCRs and, and their entries. They're, they're essentially the four things that right now um, we're going to care about. So I've got me and I've got a friend of mine in here who I, I was testing this with for a while. So we've got me and somebody else. Um, and I exist in here as, as, as my character. And then within that, I've got a link and say these are the three characters of that membership. So a throwback to what we mentioned about earlier. Um, and getting those details in is in there, um, certainly. So it's in the Power Automate, excuse me. So I'll show you how we did that shortly. Um, and then we have the, the PGCRs and the entries as well. So if we look at this, this is the bit we care about, right? This is the bit. So we can see that I've got data now loaded into my system so we can see again. This is the games that I played last night. Um, it's a completed game. It's got some details. Um, if I open one and take a look, what we can see is that it's got an ID. It's got a map name. Um, updated a yes or no. Who won the match um, based on some calculated fields? That was a useful way of me learning calculated fields that I applied them in here rather than store the data um, by itself. And down here we store data about each person. So there's me, for example, and actually I got the highest score in that game. That was entirely by luck. Um, it's not I, why I put this demo on purpose. Um, and, and every row there has got a kill, a kill death ratio score, whatever. And I can look into that record and I've got that slightly separate record. I've got more details on it. So that was my score, my kills, my, my assists, my deaths, all that sort of stuff. So the data now exists within Dataverse at this point, which means I can use it pretty much everywhere. Um, and that is apparent by the fact that I've also got this, um, which is um, a canvas app. Where's my canvas app gone? Let me. Uh, there we go. It's that one. Excuse me. So what that one sees is um, the same thing. It's the same data. It's the same everything. But this one works on my mobile. Um, Model-driven apps are a bit more awkward to do that. So this is me. I can navigate and view the data. So this is going to load in my previous games. And this is to see if I can sort of check this whilst I'm playing sort of on my phone at the time, and I can. Keep a track on it, so you can see there, there was the game I played last night with 15 to 9. Um, and then I've got some details on I could start expanding that more. And like I said, this is a work in progress, but this is the sort of thing I'm using, because I don't always have my PC available as I'm playing downstairs. Um, so this is what I have instead. Now, uh, the data's in there now, we've seen that. So how did I get the data and then what did I do? This is where the real guts of it comes in. I mean, putting it into a database is, to be honest, the easy part of it. So... I'm in Power Automate, uh, and I have a custom connector. I've got a bunch of custom connectors. You'll notice up here, by the way, I'm in my, my environment. This is my community plan environment. Um, so, yeah, we go there. So, I've got custom connectors, and I have a, a Destiny 2. And I've got a bunch of other ones, as we can see, but this is the one we care about, Destiny 2 connector. If I edit that, let's just view some details on it. Um, and this is what I've built, some, some, some general statistics on it. We don't care about this. OAuth stuff is in there. Um, if you go onto the Bungie stuff on the Bungie pages, they've got their tutorial how to handle OAuth, so that's fine. That is a standard uh, authentication that exists, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then I've got loads of um, actions, so these things that we can call. Um, some are in testing, some are not working properly, but this is, again, this is where I play with this is where I learn the things. And this is where my understanding of using Postman, for me, really comes into its own because I'm I now I'm not I'm used to what URLs look like, I'm used to what commands look like, I'm used to what responses look like. And I can um I'm not sort of scared off anymore by seeing some of these things. So get profile, that's a similar example to what we showed earlier in the postman demo. So you can see there that I'm now passing a URL, but this time I've parameterized part of the URL slightly because I can now use them as power automate um inputs. Um and that sort of stuff. So they're all in there and I've got some responses. The ones that we're really going to care about today, for example, so get activity history. That's the one. That's a very important one because we need to see where the new games are. So again, new URL there, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit longer, but you can see that that up to that point is the same, and it adds more to it. That's just the way that the Bungie API is structured. 
And again, I pass some details through to, to get the correct data in. Um, get the details of a PGCR, so when I've made a PGCR, I can go and get more details from it. Um, and that's the sort of thing that we're doing. So that is the idea of this custom connector. Um, if anybody is really interested, I'm happy to share the custom connector if you're a Destiny 2 player. Um, otherwise, your usage of it might be fairly limited. So if I look at my flows, I've got a, a full bunch of flows. Some are with the Destiny 2 stuff, some are just me playing with other things. Um, so this is one of the main ones. This is one that is um, check for latest games and membership. So this is a on a schedule. You can see it's running um, every hour to, to see if I'm playing games. So it can keep the data up to date. So there might be an hour lagging me playing a game to exist in there, but that's not the end of the world. I, I'm not up to, I'm not after sort of minute by minute analysis on how I'm doing, rather just to get a, a rough idea of it. So every hour I'm running that, um, I go and get me as a record in, and then these are the bits we care about. So I go and load in my data from the Bungie website. Um, have I played? So I've got a last updated field in CDS. Do I care if I've played? If I don't, then no point in me running this, this, this Power Automate. Um, if I have played, then I need to go and get all my characters, and then for every character I need to go in, um, get all my activity, increment over them, because that's a paginated uh, response, so I need to keep going until I've got them all, and then what I then do is, if I have played and I've got a game, then I go and find if it exists, if it doesn't exist, I go and make one. It's a bit long-winded, but basically, the ultimate end game of this is, if I find a new record, I go and make a brand new PGCR in my system, and all I put in is the ID, because I've got a second flow in a minute, that handles getting the data in because they're all called different endpoints. So that makes a new record and that's it. And then down there I update records to say that membership has now played on that date. And I just that's how I handle it basically. So has somebody played? Yes. If so, go and look for a record and make the, the PGCR if required. So if I go back into my flows again, now what you will see here is I have a get PGR details on save. These are the two that I really use. This one is triggered when a record is created. So you can see the immediate link to the other Power Automate flow that's in there. So when a PGCR is created, go and get the details. I have to do a second call to go and get the map. This is what I mentioned earlier about um, location and uh, location and locality and getting the right text. And then for every entry in my PGCR, if you remember now we've been through that data, so you know what that means, um, go and see if that already exists in the system because I might have for some reason be reiterating over um, an ID just in case. Um, if it doesn't exist, then that's great. We can go and make it and we can put all those details in we care about. Um, and ultimately, that's it. So what that does is that takes a a, a player, makes a new post-game carnage report with an ID on save, triggers a second flow, then goes in and says, okay, now I've got this one. I care about all the data. Let's take a copy of that in the system as well. Um, and that's it. I've got a bunch of other ones that we sort of go through later on. Um, yeah, they're just more testing and they were getting it working. Get characters new membership. That's what I mentioned where you would add a new member and that can automate that process just to use their API. Um, and yeah, ultimately that's where the data is now. And then this is where Power BI comes in. So this is now a Power BI dashboard that is running on that data set. Um, so you can now see there that I've played 489 games of which I've got 280 wins. So I've got just over 50% win ratio, 57.26%. Um, I've, I've mentioned, and I will reiterate again, I'm absolutely not a Power BI expert, so this is fairly crude, but it works for me. It's interesting to see the maps around good on. I do poor on, so if I can I can sort by my win count or I can sort by my win percentage. So I've only ever played that map once ever, so there must have been a special weekend it was out and I'm undefeated on that one, whereas I'm really not very good on this map and I've only won one in every three games I've played. And if I start digging into this, as you Power BI experts will know, my maps will change accordingly and I can really start getting some ideas of details. Um, these are the stats I care about. Kills and deaths and that sort of stuff so you can see um, where you're good, where you're weak. And so there you can go. There's a good example of a map that I generally has it gone? don't perform very well in. I often die more than I should. I still win, but my, I must be playing the map wrong enough to I stand in the wrong places or attack from the wrong situation or something like that results in my deaths more than they probably should on average and this is the sort of thing that I can use to start getting a picture of how I play and understanding how I play and um, really understanding that now this Power BI dashboard absolutely needs a lot of work this is where the bulk of my time is going to continue to be spent on to get this working but I think it shows the message that I'm trying to give across how I'm trying to teach myself these things and how I can track all of my data game in by, by game by game so that was pretty cool. Um, I quite like I like doing all that. I've got, I mean, just to reiterate the sort of thing you saw, you saw 
that it's also picking up my games, it's also populating my games, um, it's also doing some, some calculated field stuff, um, it's pushing into Power BI so I can then look at patterns, I can see what maps I do well on, what I do poorly on, um, it self grows and it's just it's, it's cool to see. Now it, it's absolutely very selfishly for me, it can't be used for other people and all this sort of stuff, um, but well, it's what I did while I did that was I learned a bit more on calculate fields. I I learned a bit about Power BI. In fact, I learned a lot about Power BI. Um, well, then I finished that and I thought, well, finished that. I got to the state it was in when you saw it. And I thought, what now? Can I do more? What can I do? Um, so let's take a look at this. And I was thinking about interaction with the game and, and, and making my life easier. So you might have noticed this down here, which is a thing called loadout and loadout configurations. So what I, I learned is that for specific maps, I'm better with specific weapons, right? And how, what if I can use that and help myself do that? So, I got carried away. So if I go back to my model-driven app, you'll notice there's a second part of this, which we called loadout helper. So this means I can make a grouping for a map of a specific weapon that I like, and I can use that. So these are buttons in a canvas app that I could use. Uh, and I've got a power automate that runs it, that does it. So the idea being, I press a button there, it interacts with the Xbox, and puts the weapon on that character and equips it, if possible, to save me that job. So, I mean, that's crazy, when I'm just playing the Xbox and my phone can sort that out for me. So, this is where we get technology inception. This is the Xbox controller, and if I go here, I'm currently streaming my Xbox to Twitch, so there is a slight delay. So if I was to press right, in about a second or two, you will see that the little cursor on the right hand side will move, hopefully, to the right. There we go. So there's a little delay on this just because of the nature of how it's working. I don't have a capture card, unfortunately. So in a minute, that's going to move again. So what should hopefully happen now, all going well, I will leave the control there so you can see I'm not pressing any buttons. And let's say I'm on the distant shore map now. So I press distant shore. That's now going to run a flow, which we can see that it's going to be running, so I'll come back to that in a minute. And we just have to have an awkward silence for a minute while we watch the screen. And hopefully, there you go, there's the weapon, there's the gun change, there's the weapon, there's the gun change. All through Power Automate. So that was pretty cool. Um, I got carried away a bit and I actually made Flow and Power Automate and Canvas apps actually talk to the game and change the game in real time. Um, the control wasn't in my hand, and you saw these things change. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's a nice little way of interacting with the Xbox and going that level ahead. But how did I do it? Um, now, for the eagle-eyed of you that did that, that, that were looking at that, you will have noticed actually that the, the, the power automate flow that I ran during that actually was using a slightly different connector than the one in, in the earlier demo. Um, and the reason for that is actually that the, the Destiny API, I say awkward Destiny API, maybe that's working itself fine and, and Power Automate is being awkward. Either way, the problem you've got is that as well as there being an OAuth connection through there, which has been built in, um, it also needs an API key added in and it needs some custom headers added in. And I just couldn't quite get it working in a way that I wanted it to work directly in Power Automate. Um, and because of the way that get a bit technical now and I apologise for this but for those that of you that understand this is great because of the way that essentially the um, the flow connector proxies into an Azure system that then runs it and gives you a response back um, you don't always see the responses you need to see to be able to do it and you can't always see the raw requests that you're sending so when you looked at Postman I knew exactly to the character what was being sent and what the response was but there is times when Power Automate is manipulating my request to make it do something and then send it on. I don't know what that looks like. I, I personally not yet found a way to see that. There may be a way, um, but I don't know what it is if there is. And then you get the response back as well. So it was a bit awkward. Whereas I know how to do that as a coder behind the scenes. Um, I can be a bit more powerful for that. So what I did was I myself rebuilt the Microsoft proxy um, and built my own web app that then acts as the interim to send it on. Sounds complex, right? So the easiest way for me doing that is rather than me try and explain it, we'll just dive in and this gets code heavy. So for non-developers in there, I do apologize, but it's certainly useful for you to see. And like I say, 
this is not production level code, this is a bit of fun. So it's very Hello World, it's very templated um, with the default stuff in there, but you'll get an idea of how it worked and if you were realistically going to take this to, to, to anything more serious, you would redo a lot of this. Um, but it's a nice thing to talk about, so uh, let's dive into that. So this is where it gets very in-depth, and I'm not going to dig into it for the purposes of time and also the over-complexities of um, what we're doing, and this is probably very high level for what most people want to know, but it's cool to show, and for those people that care, I figured it's worth sharing. Um, and what you may see is that, so here there's a, a, we actually use a slightly different connector. So I've got a new custom connector in here, um, so what I do here is this is the flow that was running before which was that I could take the import I get the map name out I go and find all the, I go and find all the weapons I need for that map name this is all to do with the um, the the layout sorry the data structure excuse me in dataverse and for every one of those weapons I call my custom connector now which does the transfer and equip weapon now I need to call another custom connector because I'm not actually calling the Bungie API directly I'm actually calling an interim API that I've written because of the difficulties and that Power Automate is limited and won't quite make the request as required. So what I had to do is I had to, to, to proxy it in the middle. So without going into too much detail, what you can see here is I've now got some code. This is code. This is the code that makes a website in, in a technology called MVC. Um, and I've got all sorts of code that's making requests and, and, and manipulating the web service to do what I want it to do. Um, now, Power Automate handles this stuff fantastically for you. You normally never need to worry about this stuff, but in my case, I needed it. Super high level stuff, but I, what I did is I made this as a web service. I then published it out to Azure. So you can see there that I've got a, a website that exists there, and I've now got my own API that then in turn calls another API. So that we call a proxy, it sends it outwards. So what I can now do, my extra custom connector, um, is you will see that uh, Destiny 2 proxy, there we go. There is a couple of endpoints in there that do the same sort of thing equip and transfer weapon but this time they're calling my own proxy which then passes it through onwards so it's a little bit complex um this is this isn't probably your everyday person could do um but i think it's the result was super cool ultimately and um that's yeah that's how i managed to make my canvas apps talk and change what i'm doing on the xbox in real time through the help of um, a API from the developers and then an interim one by myself. And ultimately, that's it. That is my um, my session. That is, you have you saw me playing with stuff, you saw me build things, you saw how it interacted. Um, hopefully, you found it interesting or cool, maybe even as a benefit you learned something from the session, I don't know. Um, if the one thing you've learned is that I like Destiny 2 and you fancy playing it, reach out to me um otherwise i am in chat um apologies for this being pre-recorded there was so many moving parts that i can so you can understand why um it was pre-recorded but i can say i'm in chat with myself muted so at this point i will uh give myself a signal to unmute so i can uh, hear everybody and without that thank you very much for attending and have a wonderful scottish summit